I think there's a lot of misconception about cancer. So the first thing is what causes it. Most, most medical authorities believe that this is a genetic disease. And um, that's probably not likely true. So it's probably caused by metabolic dysfunction in the cell. There are very few exceptions, the one being one particular type of leukemia is due to a genetic, disf a genetic aberration, but almost all other cancers, it's probably a metabolic disease. And so James Watson, who, who, who actually discovered DNA, he's the father of the genome, He's gone on record as saying that he thinks that the whole genetic theory of uh, cancer is completely false and, and fraudulent, and he believes that it's due to metabolic dysfunction. So if that's what he thinks, you know, who am I to argue <laughs> with what he has to say? But in fact, the literature strongly supports that it's a metabolic disease. And if you consider it a metabolic disease, then it becomes... Uh, easier to understand how you can treat it using metabolic interventions and, and the use of other repurposed drugs that target the whole cancer environment. So what people don't realize is that you have some, you have the cancer, but then you have what are called cancer stem cells. So these are the cells that give rise to the cancer. And if you give chemotherapy or radiotherapy, it, it actively, it kills the rapidly dividing cells, but it leaves the stem cells. And in fact, chemotherapy and radiotherapy promote stem cell growth and distribution. So that's why chemo and radiation is doomed to fail. The next is there's something called a tumor microenvironment. So the tumor cells are pretty smart. They produce hormones that actually alter the immune function of the microenvironment to promote their survival. So if you can target the tumor microenvironment, you make the environment of the tumor cells less favorable, then the tumor cells die. There's something called the Warburg effect. And there was a brilliant, he actually won the Nobel Prize. Uh, Otto Warburg in 1928 discovered that all cancer cells, this is all cancer cells, are metabolically dysfunctional and require glucose as their prime source of fuel. They cannot, they cannot use their mitochondria to generate energy. So the consequence of that is if you deprive the cancer cell of glucose, it actually promotes cell death. So ketosis actually is a very useful intervention if you have cancer because cancer cells can't use ketones as a source of energy, whereas human cells can, and they're dependent on glucose. So if you can starve the cancer cell by limiting glucose, you're going a long way in controlling cancer.